Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's word to you today. Now, we had a short break, but we are back. Praise God. Now, there are things that the Spirit of God have laid in my heart to share with you this month. And these are things that are so important with our life our devotion to the Lord and living in these days on the earth. Now, before we go into all that, can we call forth our daily bread? Now, this is something you should have learned to do by yourself every day. Join me right now and say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Whenever you make this declaration or demand, expect a miracle. It's something from your heart. The Bible says with your heart, you believe. Then with your mouth, you make confession unto salvation. But you've got to believe first that what you are saying will come to pass, that what you are demanding for will be given to you. You've got to believe with your heart. Praise God. Now, turn your Bibles with me to the book of Mark. Mark chapter 16. That's the last chapter in the book of Mark. Mark chapter 16. Now, we're going to be reading from verse 15. Mark 16 from verse 15. It says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Take note of these words. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And then he said in verse 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. I'm reading from the old King James. Anyone who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Anyone who doesn't believe shall be damned. And then verse 17, that's where we are focusing on. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Jesus said, go preach. And anyone who believes and is baptized shall be saved. And then he says, and these signs you will find in those who believe. Now, I want you to understand something. I'm going to be sharing with you this month on what it means to follow Jesus. What does it mean to follow Jesus? Now, Jesus is speaking here. He, he's, he's releasing his disciples. Now, by extension, he gave us the same instruction. This is why we preach the gospel everywhere we go. Now he says, and these signs shall follow the people that believe. So you are preaching and, and, and you are finding people coming to you to say, oh, we believe what you have said. We want to follow your Jesus. And Jesus says, mm -mm. saying with the mouth is not enough. You see, I, I, I've told you this on this broadcast many times. You know, when we call, make altar call and people gather and he says, say after me, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I confess with my mother, Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart that God, you raised him from the dead. He says, you are now saved. No, sir, that's not what brings salvation to them. That's not what brings, it's not the following you to pray. That's not what Paul meant when he says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth. He used the word confess. First, it didn't say thou shalt say with thy mouth. He used the word confess. Now, confession is deeper than saying. Before one gets to that place of confession, there must be a conviction in the heart. Now, you see that conviction is not anything any man can bring. 
a real conviction comes from the Holy Ghost. That's why the Bible tells us no man can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Ghost. But it's easy. Anybody can just say, oh, of course, Jesus is Lord now. Anybody can say that. Now, what's he saying? Say. He's not saying no man can speak Jesus is Lord. He said no man can say that there is a difference between speaking and saying. You speak with your lips. You say with your heart. You see that now? You speak with your lips or with your mouth. But you say with your heart. Now you find people, they are saying something completely different from what they are speaking. We've talked about this several times. They, they are saying different things from what they are speaking. So they speak all the nice things, but they are saying all the wrong things. Praise <laughs> God. Oh, how are you? How, how is everything? And then the person, you know, wow, wow. You And then the moment the person, you know, like, you didn't speak anything with your mouth. All you just did. But see, you have said something. What brought that expression is what you said in your heart. So in your heart, you despise that person. But you didn't speak, I despise you. But you see, events that were shaping your relationship with that person is not because of what you spoke in a greeting. It's what you say in your heart. So the same thing with confession and saying. You confess with your heart. So when it comes out of your mouth, there must be an agreement with you, from your heart to your mouth. You see that? So it's not just coming out of, of, of for the altar call and the pastor says, say after me, Heavenly Father. Okay, so if the pastor doesn't say, say after me, is it that you don't get saved? So the heart, the heart, the conviction of the heart is brought forth by the Holy Spirit. Now, when that the conviction comes into your heart, your eyes are open to see that Jesus is Lord. Now, not somebody convincing you for the past one hour why you should give your life to Jesus Christ. In the midst of all that talk, the Holy Spirit descends on your heart and suddenly you realize Jesus is Lord. Come on. No, really. Why haven't I given my life to him? You see that now? So there are some of those people, they will not even come out for the altar call, but they go home and they start having dealings with the Lord. You see? So now, here he says, this sign shall follow them that believe. So you, the preacher, you, the one who goes around preaching to people, if you want to know people who have believed, you must look out for this. And the first thing he says here is, in my name, they shall cast out devils. Hmm. Why did Jesus make the first, this the first sign? To know a believer. I'm going to talk to you about this. Why is Jesus saying the first thing. The first way you know. That this person is a believer. Is that you find him casting out devils. Not just casting out devils. He is casting out devils in the name of Jesus. Why is that important? You know sometimes people think. You know, casting out devils for preachers, you know. Ah, me, you know, have you heard have you heard the believers who they, you know it's amazing? They they are in a meeting and someone is casting out devils, and then they are like, ah, this oh, the devil should not leave that person and come and enter me. I be in the prayer mode, you no, know, be in the prayer mode, so that the devil will not leave that person and come and enter you. You see the problem. Are you a believer in Christ Jesus? If you are. Jesus said, you will cast devils out in his name. And that is the first sign that Jesus gave as a believer or as how to know who a believer is. Why is that so? The reason is very simple. The reason is 
We are in a warfare on earth. A lot of believers don't understand. They don't know this. But this is warfare that is taking place. I'll give you an idea of how that warfare is working so, so, the, so that the Holy Spirit can help expound it in your mind. Let me tell you something. The world we live in today is completely or, or miles away from what life is supposed to be on earth. You should know that ordinarily. You should know that. Praise God. What, what you're living on earth is miles from what life is supposed to be. So why has life become like this? Why are we here the way we are? Why are things this way? Why do we have the kind of people ruling the nations the way they do? Why do we have wickedness spreading all around? Why do we have these things all over? It's because you will be shocked when I say this, but believe me, it's because of demonic activities. You don't know how much damage demons have done to your life. You don't know the kind of damage demons have done to your environment. You don't understand it. Until the Lord opens your eyes to see then you will understand and realize that, ah, indeed, it's like putting the first two in someone's hand. That, you know, you, you got born again, now you're recruited to become a soldier immediately, and you're given a weapon. And what's the weapon for? Say, this weapon is to cast out devils. Cast out devils. Yeah. Now, start casting out devils. You see, the idea people have when we talk about casting out devils is what they've seen on TV, what they've seen in, in churches. Come out! Eh, no, I will not come out. Eh, no, eh, and then you start dragging, and they say, oh, I know, you know, there are believers who are even scared, you know, say, ah, let me not go and do the one that uh, they did not send me. Uh, and so that, because you remember the seven sons of Sceva. And say, oh, Jesus, we know, Paul, we know, who are you? I don't want any devil to ask me who I know. Ah, you know, ah, me, I'm, I'm, I'm praying God should give me the anointing to cast out devils. Brothers and sisters, there's no special anointing to cast out devils. We cast out devils with authority. And that authority is in Jesus. And Jesus has given us that authority to use his name. We don't cast out devils. I want you to listen to me. We don't cast out devils because we are powerful. No, sir. We cast out devil. Casting out devils is not a way to show power. Nah. Anyone who tells you, look, demons are operating in your life because you 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 lack power. That person is lying to you. Now they, they are trying to inspire you into going into deeper things, which is fine. But to say that the, that's the reason demons are playing in your life. No, the reason demons are playing in your life is because of your ignorance. It's because of your ignorance. Yeah. So, so imagine now Jesus said the first, someone who believes, the first way you will know that he has believed is that he will cast out devils. Now he's not been trained yet. He's not been taught the word of God yet. He's not been, no, no, he's not. He, this is the first sign. So he just gave his life to Christ. Now you're expecting him to cast out devil. That's the expectation of Jesus. You know, sometimes you hear preachers say, don't go and try some things. Oh. When you have not developed, if not, Satan will mess with you. Hey, hey, the reason demons mess up with people is because of ignorance. Brothers and sisters, hear me and, and hear me right. Because I'm going to take you through a journey in this series of teachings we're going to be doing. I'm going to take you through a journey to understand why. Why did Jesus say we should cast out devils? Why? Who are demons? Where did they come from? How do they operate? We're going to talk about those things. So you will understand why it's so important. And, and this is something Jesus, you know, he looks at us and he's wondering, what are they doing? What are they doing? 
You ask a believer, how long have you been a, a believer? Oh, I've been a believer for five years. I've been a believer for 10 years. Have you ever cast out the devil? Ah, no, ah, eh. no I, I'm not called into those kind of things. You see, the moment you begin to think like that, I'll tell you the truth. You, you have already, <laughs> they've, they've trapped you already and put fear in your heart. There's demonic oppression taking place in your life already. So solid. Now they have put the fear of them in your heart. So you can't even go there and say, I know, you see, uh, as a believer, it's good to take things slow. No, Jesus said, the way I should know or the way I will know that you have believed is that you will cast out devils. Why? Because every demon spirit and casting out devils doesn't necessarily mean casting out devils from people. Now, that's what I want you to understand. Because all you can think about is cast out devils from people. So, so you could be looking for people who carry, who carry devil. Now, there are demons living in people, yes. But beyond that, there are demons in your head. There are demons trying to enter you, you. There are demons singing around you trying to find passageway into you. Those two are demons you need to cast out. You remember Jesus talking to Peter one time, telling them, he was talking to the disciples and telling them how he was going to die and go to the cross. And the Bible said, Peter took him aside and began to warn him. He began to, you know, what, what's wrong with you? Can you imagine Peter? He took him aside. I said, look, let, let, let me not say this thing before everybody. But this thing you're doing is wrong. It's very wrong. How can you say you would die? Now, Peter, he, 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 rebuked, he was rebuking him. And what did Jesus say? Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. Now, was Jesus calling Peter Satan? No, he wasn't. What happened? While Jesus was rebuking, while, while Peter was rebuking Jesus, Jesus began to hear the voice of the devil. Where was the voice of the devil coming from? Peter, no. No. He was hearing the voice of the devil here. Peter was speaking there. He was hearing the devil here. And that's how demons operate. Now, so Jesus said, get it behind me, Satan. Not more than get lost. And that's casting out devils. You cast them out. Get out now. Oh, you don't know how much. Now, why is it important I'm sharing these things with you? Now, some of you will be thinking, oh, uh, he wants to take us into how to cast out devils. Listen, listen. You don't know how much destruction the devils or demons have reigned over your life or in your life. You don't know. You don't know those things that you were supposed to have done. How demons, devils spoke you out of it. And now you are far away from your inheritance. You don't know. You're looking for demons in other people. You don't know the ones that have waged a barricade around your life. That you will not move forward from where you are. Not because God is restricting you from moving forward. No. God will send his word, but you are not able to rise to carry out his word. Why? Because you are listening to someone else. You are listening to demons. That have formed a limitation in your life. I'm trusting the spirit of God as we go on in this teaching. The kind of liberation that is going to hit you. Listen, don't miss any of this series. Don't miss any of this series. Praise God. Because my time is up today. But I tell you this. You are about to be made free. You are about to, to, be, to, be, to break forth from those things that hold you. And the Spirit of God is going to give you liberty. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.